All right, in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at our access tools. Now, um, it can be one of the most frustrating things to somebody who's just getting started in Cinema 4D when it comes to kind of moving the axis or the anchor point or the pivot point or whatever each program calls it because they all call it something different. But today, we will see the main ways of how we can work with the axis in Cinema 4D. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we got some objects to go through here and we're going to just start very basic with this cube and this could be any object that you modeled uh, and because you modeled it um, the axis is now not where you would like it to be and normally when it comes to the position of this axis we would like it in the middle of our object there are other situations though for instance if you had a door you would want the axis here um, or the pivot point or the anchor point because you know really it could be called any of those things and if you're coming from uh, Illustrator or After Effects, um, you may be used to it being called, say, the anchor point. But uh, for instance, a door, you would want this to be where the hinges are, where it's going to pivot or where it's going to rotate. And this is extremely important for animation as well uh, to make sure you position this and have it be exactly where you need to before you start animating it. Okay, so when it comes to the simplest way to do this, um, it is our axis modification tool up here. To an, um, in order to do it, we have to enable axis modification. And then we can come here and move our axis without moving the object itself. So that can be really, really handy. The one downside to this though, even though it is super easy, is that it's not as precise as some of our other methods. And yeah, I could certainly switch to say a front view, zoom in, and really kind of try and get this as close as I can to the edge or wherever I want it to be. Um, but there are gonna be times where uh, we want this to be as precise as possible. And that's where we dive into our axis tools. It is important to point out to turn this off when you are done using it. The shortcut key for this is L um, and it is possible to accidentally hit that. And so if there ever comes a time where you're trying to move the object, but it's not moving, but the axis is, uh, this is probably the culprit. Now, let's say, like I said, you want to be able to move that axis with a little bit more precision. That's where we come down in here to our tools menu, choose axis, and look at all of these different options here. Okay. Now, what's interesting is uh, we have a lot of presets, okay, that apply something very quickly and very easily that we can also do in our axis center. But if you actually make changes to the different properties and options in the axis center, it will throw off um, what we have going on with these. Um, definitely the center axis too. So you definitely need to be mindful of that. But let's say we just wanted to center the axis. Well, all we should have to do is hit center axis two and it will find the middle of this. Um, these others deal with different options, which we'll dive into a bit later here. Um, but for the time being, I wanted to show center axis two, and then also talk about the axis center tool, because this is, like I said, kind of the main thing here. Everything else is really just a different combination of these settings. So the first thing I recommend turning on in here um, is auto update. Okay, that also allows us to have viewport update. Now, the one downside to this is it's actually gonna make changes as we, we do this um, and undoing uh, access changes as you you know decide to move it in different places um, can be hard to undo or don't undo at all. So just be mindful of that. But what we can now do here is say we are going to work with our axis and we're gonna center it um, based on our three dimensions here. And so with a value of zero in each of these, it's going to just center it to our object. Now, if we want to move it along a given axis, you can then use your slider here to move this along the positive or negative direction of that axis until it reaches the very end. So what I did here is I moved this object along the positive X axis, which is the direction this arrow is facing until it reached the edge of that object. Okay, if I was to take this negative, it would go the opposite direction until it reaches the edge of the object. Keep in mind though, it's our entire object. So if you're wondering why it didn't stop right there, it's because this object continues on the Y axis where it goes further in the negative X axis direction up here. And so that's why. So it's not always as convenient as you might think. Um, and you know we have other ways of working with our axis, especially for uh, you know modeling tools, moving points, edges, 
things like that in our move, rotate, and scale tools, which perhaps I'll get to in a later video. Um, but if we want to do this on our whole object, when we're in model mode or object mode, this is um, the way to do it. Same thing works for the Y axis. It'll go to the very top of this object or until it reaches the most, um, the tallest part of this object on the positive Y axis or all the way down to the bottom of this object on the negative Y. Same thing for Z as well, but hopefully you get it. Okay, a lot of these other um, actions we can do, I don't necessarily recommend uh, or honestly use that much. You can move the object to the axis here, right? And if I just zero this out or even just hit reset for that matter, it'll go back to the middle, but you can move the object to that point, okay? And you may be going, why would you wanna do that? Well, you, you really wouldn't want to, okay? Or at least not all that often. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, and some of these other options can be a bit confusing and I will get to them as well. Alignment, for instance, deals with rotation. So um, I have an example here, we get to where the axis is um, been rotated. Maybe it's from a downloaded model, something you did on accident, you wanna reset it a bit. Um, there are a few different ways you can do that, but this is definitely um, one of them. But uh, the easiest way to use this axis center tool or the most common way is when you want to move it along a given axis. But now notice as I'm using these um, percentages here, um, it's moving the object while keeping the axis, okay? So that is what's important with that particular mode. Um, here, it's gonna center it to the actual view center. So wherever my view is centered, that's where the object moves to based on where that axis is. So once again, why would you want this? I don't know. It's definitely not very precise, but who knows? Um, the other two deal with um, an object if it's a parent, this one's not, so it won't have any impact. And honestly, really center parent to or center to parent are the better way of doing this. So axis two is the one I use the majority of the time and um, these sliders are definitely the way to do it, okay? So that's a quick look at the axis center tool. Now I wanna dive in a little bit more with it with this example because you may download an object or get it from the asset browser, right? And honestly, there's nothing wrong with where um, the axis is on this. It's kind of towards the back, towards the bottom. So that way it would be easy to place it on the ground up against a wall. But let's say you wanted to move this, okay? Well, when you get into more complex hierarchies, that is where you run into issues, okay? Using that axis tool. And we'll see how to fix that in the text example here. Um, but just to kind of show you what uh, you might think you can do uh, is then have your null selected, the parent, come here to access center, go awesome, all I wanna do is center this, and you hit execute and nothing happens, all right? And that's because we have a null selected and a null is not geometry. So yeah, it's not gonna move, it's not gonna do anything, okay? Because it doesn't have a polygon object to reference here. Now, what you can do, you can try is to check include children and use all objects. And notice how that made it made it move, okay? And honestly, not in a place I would have liked. So what happened there? Well, it looked at some of these other generators and it kind of messed things up, okay? So um, ultimately with that, what I wanted to show is that the access center tool won't work on um, a complex hierarchy like this, and specifically one that has generators. If this was just polygon objects here. So if I just go through here and let's see, I think that one will work, but even make this one editable. Okay, just so I have polygon objects, even though this is a um, still relatively complex hierarchy, lots of nulls and objects inside. Now, when I choose this and I go tools, axis, axis center, and I hit execute, notice how it does exactly what you would think it would do now. It goes right to the middle of this object and I can still use this to put it towards the bottom move it along the Z axis, whatever. So um, it can work, but you do need to make sure to include children and use all objects, um, but it also doesn't seem to like generators. And so I think that's really, really important to point out, okay? So um, if you want to center a hierarchy, make sure to just uh, turn on include children, use all objects, and then with a bit of luck, it will work. And if it doesn't make, uh, go through and take a look at your generators 
Um, and if you don't want to make things editable, because we don't want to do that unless we absolutely have to, even for something like this, um, we'll see a different way we can work with our axis to uh, position it precisely here very shortly. So finishing up with our axis center tool, um, let's say uh, our rotation is all messed up here. Uh, well, that's where we can use um, our alignment. So if I uncheck center, uncheck check alignment, I can now work with my axis um, with how it's orientated. And right now I'm choosing all of my axes based on my normals, which because there's so many different normals going different directions, really isn't going to do much. But if I choose world here and hit execute, you can see it does reset it back to um, our base uh, value there. And honestly, that's all I would really use this for. Okay. Um, yeah, you can work with, you know, selected edges. Um, and I forgot to mention that up here. You can work with selected points, polygons, and edges. I can go back to that here in a second. Um, but yeah, the alignment section, really only thing I use it for is to reset this. And even then there are other ways that are a bit easier to do this that um, I would probably use instead. But there's the alignment section there. Um, I mentioned that selected points and edges thing. So really quickly, I have a cube. If I go in and select, say, some points here, and if I go into edge, edge, hopefully you'll get the idea. Now, if I go back to my axis center tool, okay, and choose selected points, all right, notice how it's now centered between those two points I had selected. And I can work with my axes here um, between those two points I had selected. So if you know you want it on a certain part of the object, that can allow you to uh, make it a bit easier. Same thing if I was to go with edges here. It's going to just work on that edge I had selected. Okay. So if you have a really complex object, but you have a pretty good idea of where you want it to go, this can be a way to kind of get you in the ballpark much quicker. All right. So moving on down the line here. So let's talk about some of our other tools here. Okay. So we have, say, some text that maybe we brought over from Illustrator. Maybe we, you know, built it in Cinema 4D, but it's now editable, and it's in, ex in an extrude, and our axis is not where we want. Well, what you can do, and what you may often, often have to do in a complex hierarchy, or something like we saw on the sofa, sofa, where there are a lot of generators, is come to your tools menu, go to your axis, and this is where we can um, use some of these other options here, specifically center parent to and center to parent. And I'm going to duplicate this text because um, like I said, it's hard to undo, uh, or it doesn't undo. So just want to make sure you get this right. Um, at least for this demonstration here. So with my text spline, if I hit center axis to notice how it didn't move to the center. Well, that's because of my axis center tool. It wasn't zeroed out here. It wasn't reset. So that's actually what I will do. And now right away it goes to the middle, but I can hit center axis to, and that, and that's looking pretty good. Keep in mind though, this is a spline. A spline doesn't have any thickness, okay? So that's why it went to the back instead of the actual middle, all right? But for this example, that'll be just fine. Now, when I select my text, it's still over here. Well, what I can do is make sure I have my spline selected, okay? And then choose center parent to. And when I choose center parent to, it's not going to look like anything changed, but if I now select my extrude, it moved it. The parent of our text spline here was the extrude, and so it moved it to where the axis of the child was, or in this case, the text spline. Okay, so that's probably the other most common thing I use other than center axis to is center parent to, especially for hierarchies like this. Okay, just because it saves me time from having to go to my axis center and turning on include all objects, you know, use all or include children, use all objects, make sure I have that selected and then and then do it this way. Though you could absolutely do that. All right, the other one, okay, is center to parent, okay? So I'm gonna center my text spline, just center the axis there, all right? The text, the extrude is still positioned here. Remember it's a generator, so um, it doesn't really have any geometry. It's just its position. But if I do center to parent, it moves that text spline to where that extrude was. Now, you know, I can move this and do whatever. It's centered just like it was before. So 
that works as well, but it's a little bit of an extra step because I now have to move that extrude back to where it was initially, okay? So that is really the, the main way I work with hierarchies, especially something like extrudes in order to get something centered. And then obviously, if I want that kind of centered more, I can turn on axis modification, move it there, and that looks pretty good, okay? So you can kind of use that to your advantage in a situation like this where the bullseye, um, you know, it is positioned correctly, but the outer part, but the inner um, is not really centered to it. So if I select the bullseye here and then do centered apparent, it's going to center it right away for me. So you can really work with that hierarchy either way, starting with the child working your way up. And that works very well for um, splines and say extrudes or other hierarchies where you just want to center um, something and not have it move from where it was. On the other hand, if you have an object that, you know, is a child that's not positioned correctly, okay, that's where centering to its parent can be useful. Though it does matter where the axis of the parent is. If the axis of the parent is off, okay, and then I choose my inner part and do center to parent, well, that really didn't do me any good. And keep in mind, I also have a null here as well that's, you know, positioned correctly. So I could select the center one and choose center parent to, or center to parent. Okay. So now that's centered there. And then do uh, make sure I center the axis on this one and then do center to parent. So it can be a bit confusing till you wrap your head around it. Really no different than a lot of other things in Cinema 4D. But this is really um, something you want to make sure you understand and you're very comfortable doing. It can save you a bunch of time um, as you're setting things up, organizing things, as well as creating animation. And then, you know, really, in to finish this off, the bullseye here, it's not where I want it to be, but this is, the child is. So once again, select the child, center parent to. It will move the parent of this object, which is the null, right where I want it. And honestly, I use these tools so much. I haven't done it in 2023 yet because I still don't really use it for production, but I create a little um, palette right here with these tools so that I can very quickly and easily get to them. And just so I can show you what that looks like, if you come over here to the customization um, menu option under window, you can choose new palette and then come back here and choose uh, customize palettes, right? I can take this customized palette, drag it where I want it, which is gonna be right there, just right above my object manager, and then take these tools and put them right there. So honestly, the three I use are access center, center access to, and center parent to, okay? Um, those are the ones I use the most. And so once I'm happy with that, I can close this, you can then right click, right click on this, change the icon icon size to medium. All right, could even do small if you you know prefer that. You can tell it whether you want it to show icons, icon and text, whatever. Uh, and then lastly, what you would want to do is save out this user interface because if you just switch to one of these, you will lose this. And then you can do that by going back to customization and choosing either to save this as the startup layout, which um, means every time you start Cinema 4D, this is how it will look, that palette will be saved, or you can save it as a custom layout. And that will then be uh, something that you see here in these other tabs. And, and that way you can very quickly switch to it. Okay, so that will do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please let me know if there's anything else you would like to see and take care.